So let, let, let me start. Um, my name is Anton, so I'm working as a VP of engineering at WebSell for two years already uh, here in Singapore. However, I'm originally from a beautiful city of uh, St. Petersburg in Russia and uh, come to visit this uh, nice place. However, it's uh, less than last year, it was less than uh, 30 sunny days there, so I enjoy uh, living in Singapore. So I'm building APIs in telecom sector for 15 years already and I'm going to talk with you about a business on uh, APIs. So according to uh, different API directories, amount of publicly facing APIs rise in the range from 10 to 22,000 APIs. And this is just the tip of our iceberg. We are unable to count the number of APIs that connects businesses, in fact. It's a huge amount. So, and considering there are many talks today and tomorrow about uh, financial related APIs. So here's uh, just a graph uh, from a programmable web that uh, nowadays it's more than 2,500 financial API exist already, which is only registered on their platform. And uh, how serious is a business uh, based on API? Let's look at some of the largest uh, companies uh, where API is a key driver of their business growth. So first example is a Salesforce. Over half of their revenue actually comes from an uh, API and keeps growing. Uh, Expedia is well known for affiliate marketing. Over 90% of their uh, revenue is driven by different types of uh, API integration with travel agencies and so on. And like uh, more than 70% of uh, items that are listed and we see on eBay actually was uh, published over API. And uh, Stripe as a well-known uh, payment API provider with a 20 billion US dollar uh, valuation. And I believe most of you heard about uh, four main business model for APIs. And if you want to deep dive uh, into detailed classification, search a line for the presentation of uh, John Musser. He described more than 20 models with the samples uh, back in six, six years ago. So you can see that some APIs are free to use. For example, the uh, Smart Nation Initiative by Singaporean government, who give access to a lot of public data sets and also allows to developers to use some real-time uh, APIs such as car park availability or real-time location of uh, taxi drivers or air quality. And uh, some APIs are just uh, extra features for cloud-based services. Their goal is to help users make a better use of such service. For example, then Desk, who provides API to create uh, support tickets programmatically. And uh, for some, some APIs are just the main product of the company, the main way how they consume company services. And that's our case at WebSell. So I will focus primarily on this business model onwards, uh, where revenue is driven directly by volume of API usage. So WebSell generates more than 90% of our revenue by providing services over API. So to give you a better picture, I'm talking about 36 million US dollars annual revenue rate. And this is made via API. So for the last two years since I joined the company, uh, the amount of HTTP requests to our API endpoints increased in 80 times. So today we process millions of API requests daily. And uh, the most pleasant part that we get paid almost for all of them. So let me share a little bit about WaveSale and what we do. So you get an idea what we as a team went through and how we managed to overcome some business challenges uh, during the building our business on APIs. WaveSell enables its clients to reach their end user customers uh, through real-time communication APIs across various digital channels such as SMS, chat apps, video interaction, and voice. Created back in 2010 in Singapore, WaveSell made its mission to help enterprises to use traditional telecommunication programmatically and offer this and integrate to their services and application. For example, using WaveSell API, it's easy for fintech companies that cover Southeast Asia 
to send a one-time password SMS to a newly registered user somewhere in Indonesia or in Thailand and verify that it's a phone number valid. Or to breach a phone call between a ride-hailing driver and a passenger and uh, while respecting the privacy of each party's uh, phone number. Following the evolution of uh, traditional te telecommunication methods, WebSell improved its initial offering by adding uh, new APIs to power conversations and notifications on uh, chat apps such as WeChat, WhatsApp, Viber, Line, Google RCS, and some others, and to easily embed and power video interaction calls. WebSell brings value to enterprises across many different industries, from e-commerce to fintech, transportation, and travel. And uh, we have a strong presence in Asia. However, our products can be used on a global market anywhere across the world to get in touch with any mobile customer from any location. So how the journey to successful API business looks like? So if there is one stage in API business that is critical to success of the others, it's establishing your organizational digital strategy. Without a validated, well-articulated, and executive-backed uh, digital strategy, it will be nearly impossible to organize for success. It should be very clear that APIs are not living only inside the engineering department. It will impact your whole organizations. So first of all, align with your stakeholders. Executive must be supportive of a necessary financial investments and the duration of the journey. And to be prepared to reorganize the company, mandate behavioral changes, and to fundamentally change the organization culture. You have to clearly identify your business outcomes. After that, what audience are you going to target? It can be a large set of unknown developers, most of whom are building applications that are difficult for you as an API provider to keep track of. All of them will rely on you for some degree of uh, self-service capability and a technical support. However, none of the ROI is known to you. Either it could be a small set of unknown developers and to all of whom certain business expectations are attached. The methods how these two types of audience should be addressed are quite different. So the next step, when it comes to monetization on API, different pricing models are being used. So the first one is uh, pay-per-use. This is straight uh, forward offer, especially when you have a strong variable cost attached. It's simple to understand. It offers a la carte formula to users who can control their spending. It allows you to clearly communicate a value proposition for the set price point. And also it has a low barrier to adoption thanks to the missing fixed fee. However, it might favor ad hoc customers instead of uh, recurring customers. So second model is a fixed quota when API provider charge for a fixed amount of API calls per month or just some other objects like uh, monthly active users. It makes revenue more predictable. In addition, it allows you to get a higher revenue from uh, low volume developers. However, quota limits must be carefully monitored to avoid service shutdown. Pricing points need to be accurately positioned. High fee subscription can be a barrier to entry. That is why there is a sense to use a mixed model sometimes, which is just a plan plus overage. Client pays for the fixed quota and for additional volume. But make sure that you properly communicate on overages uh, to clients. So decide which model best fits your API needs. To make sense of some data that I would like to share with you, I find an interesting set of numbers from the guys at the Rapid API. Based on the thousands of APIs registered on their platform, the average price per API call for pay as you go model is around three cents. Of course, it varies based on the functionality and what is the main purpose of API. However, it still might be interesting inside. So 
once a business strategy and a pricing model has been defined and you have launched your API, you got your first users, you need to ensure that all of these check boxes um, are executed when it comes to your API user journey. So let's start with the first one, and the stability. First of all, is the API is a really important step, which happens on the initial stages on the development. API is a product from developers to developers. It must be professional. That's the way to earn the loyalty uh, from developers to speed up your integration and to simplify the uh, future support. I spend hours of a brainstorming with my engineering team, even sometimes on a basic API endpoints, because the, it will cost much more if you decide to change it later. API must be restful, follow best practices, use uh, ISO standards, and put efforts to simplify complex flows. For example, recently we were integrating API of one survey platform. We were surprised that this is a well-known company. However, they have very unusual format of API. So at the end, we spent two times more time to integrate them and also was troubleshooting bugs on the way. Obviously, before driving straight into documentation, developers should be provided with some articles, guides, explaining the key principles of API and a brief summary of the business context in which API should be used for. It might seem obvious, but the, in the eyes of developers, if there are two APIs with almost the same functionality, but if they have a different level of documentation quality, it plays a significant role for them. If possible, documentation must be available online and keep involving there. So when I receive API specs in just a PDF, it's already a sign for me that probably this, for this company, API is not the main business. And thanks to the Swagger team who managed to create and uh, promote uh, open API spe specification in the world. So it's a great way to share your API uh, API spec and quickly generate uh, client libraries. And obviously, uh, sample applications should be provided uh, with the comments to developers interested in learning how different APIs should be used together. And what I see more often, the developers started to exchange uh, Postman collections. Uh, let me elaborate on why all of this is important. Use this as the graph showing above. Okay, something dropped. Um, it was shown on recent API Days conference in Paris uh, in December. So more than 100 of companies from 44 countries was surveyed to get this data. So we can see that usually it takes more than a month to integrate some API and start using this really in a business. So it's a huge number. Find the way to decrease it and you will onboard your clients faster. So the next one is how you're going to promote your API and make it discoverable. Most of the time, unless your reputation is big enough, people will be end up at your page at your API because they were Googling like something like um, API to send birds or get in a shipping cost of uh, sending the birds in a, in a Python. So you want to make sure that your online marketing strategy is focused toward maximizing visibility on these channels while ensuring relevance. If it's not relevant, you might be joined on the unproductive uh, support interactions. You might be paying for the traffic that doesn't bring you any revenue. And API, I mean to be used in an ecosystem in the business tools, probably like CRM, analytics, support uh, platforms, marketing tools. It's a key to identify the services connects to yours and to tie the stronger relationship with the key players in these fields. It can take the form of a joint offer or just a basic recommendation. But in the realm of APIs and technology projects, you will be joining forces with other technology uh, providers to build a larger project. Build a reputation for your API by participating in events like uh, API days. 
and to drive word of mouth adoption. Very often, potential users of API will have no ideas of all the use cases that can be solved by uh, your API. So educate your potential audience. So next one is uh, to give possibility to developers, to your clients, the way to experiment with your API. All of us want to try first before buying, right? Especially if this is true with API, you need to see how well it solves your business problem. Especially true with API, which uh, business model requires some upfront payment. So give them and build some functionality of a trial. Developers should not be afraid of using your API while experimenting. They don't want to trigger real actions like uh, sending a million of SMS or just uh, spending, mildly, uh, spending money while exploring capabilities of your API. So for these reasons, offer them a sandbox with detailed feedback of what's happening. It makes integration easier and uh, faster. At this point, I have to mention the Stripe. Have you seen the dashboard? No, it's probably the best of uh, the best. They made a great job. So it really gives a lot of possibilities to developers uh, for use a sandbox uh, solution and to, to give you full visibility what's happening with the uh, API. Um, it's so cool also to offer interactive documentation where a developer can initiate API call directly from the documentation page. It should be the speaker from a stoplight company here in this room. So they, they do exactly this and also allows you to generate uh, open API spec. So it really uh, makes the integration faster. So to maximize your growth, it's also essential to make it possible for your users to, do, to get access to your service in a fully automated way. They shouldn't, they shouldn't wait for just when configuration will be provisioning to get API keys or to do the payment. Make it fully automated. So when it comes directly to integration, first of all, again, it's about using the standards. And uh, if your API is quite complex, offer them SDK. I saw that there is the EPIONIX uh, company here. So they also specialize in helping companies to build the SDK. And um, save some time for your support team by building FAQ. And uh, if you have your uh, key accounts, and definitely for some integrations, they need a more specific and more advanced solution, be sure that you have a solution engineers in your team. And build the efficient dashboards for them. It can be hard to troubleshoot what is happening when integrating API. You give to, for them as much transparency as possible. A lot of time, API integration is meant to connect tools together by identifying what are the most common tools alongside um, your API and creating a standard integration. You can make it almost plug and play for users to start using your service. So once the previous steps are mastered and you should be all set uh, to bring your API towards a commercial success, to do so, just like for any other type of product, you will need to define and execute a complete product strategy. You need the full support of your sales team, marketing team, product managers, and support. And uh, obviously, growing uh, an API product into successful business doesn't come without the challenges. So let me share a few of them that we uh, we have self-faced. By getting more users and more usage, new technical challenges will present and will need to be taken care of. We also face challenges in the monetization and uh, competition. First of all, as your API will become more and more important to your users, since their business may depend on you, it will be a key to make sure that they don't experience any service uh, disruption. In other words, you must guarantee 100% of time. I know that for some of our clients, uh, our services are so key and important for them, so they even include us 
into their dis disaster recovery plans. It's also vital to invest in a lot of internal tools that will help you monitor your uptime and your processing time and that your API working and, uh, as expected. So for example, the central logs aggregation, it might be not a cheap project, but you still need this to serve your clients better. While having uh, just a few customers sending a hundreds of requests a day doesn't require the same infrastructure as when you have a thousand of customers who are sending millions uh, requests a day. So thanks to the cloud computing, it's now easy uh, to build elastic infrastructure. Be prepared for this growth and it also uh, give you uh, flexibility on managing your infrastructure cost. We also spend a lot of efforts on decreasing the latency of our API. So the faster it works, the more you can process. It means that the happy developers that who use this API and are less spending on your infrastructure again. Uh, while serving the customers on a global scale needs a cloud infrastructure distributed in the same way. And also don't forget about some local constraint. Is uh, anyone is planning to have uh, clients uh, in the mainland China? Hmm? How are you going to provide a reliable API availability across a great China firewall to them? Think about this. Obviously, uh, versioning. Some customers actually stay with you for years and you still have to maintain their deprecated version of API. It's also some cost. Security is really important part of any API. If hackers wants to attack you, he will probably focus on, you, on your API first. So locate enough resources to spend on a penetration testing, security audits, and encryption. Sometimes it's not easy to decide um, how to charge your clients for API usage. Are you going to use a prepaid model or postpaid model? Clients will probably prefer the postpaid, but in that case, be ready to uh, solve the challenges for money collection and uh, fraud prevention. We see that even some reliable companies who has enough money in the bank still delay their payments for months, and it might impact your cash flow. In highly concurrent industries, it's very likely that you will face competition with other players. Even though it's uh, harder to switch the API providers than just to switch office supplies provider, uh, when a competitor comes with more aggressive pricing or better features, it can be even complicated to retain even more loyal users. So this is why your API should keep evolving and continuously bring a more value to your customers. Integrate with their favorite tools, make their life easier, expand across more use cases and new products. By doing so, you become a more than just a technology provider. You're going to become the real partner to them. So in a summary, make sure that you optimize your tactics to maximize your journey to success. When the success comes, be wary of its price and the new challenges that will come together with your new scale. If there is one key aspect to remember is that you build a product that businesses and developers will grow to be dependent on. So it's essential to not let them down. By creating a strong relationship with your users, you will understand their challenges and involve to bring them more value with your service. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Okay, this thing on. Works. There we go. Cool. We've got questions. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about deprecation of APIs? So, how can you manage your users to stop using the version of API you don't want to support anymore? And what is the typical uh, time to support such versions? So, what we do is uh, first we identify all of these clients. Who is actually still? It's uh, the first part. 
to define the clients, you start communicating with them directly. Guys, we have a new version. It allows you to do more features. It, it, it gives you more flexibility. So we promote and facilitate them to move. However, that's the reality that some companies, because they have also their backlog of a task, it's uh, sometimes you don't bring them really value. They, they don't see the point actually to, to migrate. So in that case, if he still this client generates some money for you, you have to maintain this old version. So what we do, we still have uh, more than a dozen of clients who use our version that uh, was created more than three years ago. That is why I mentioned that it's also important to design this API in advance. Try, because it's really hard to change over the time. So try from the very beginning to think all of the uh, potential cases in the future and to make it expandable in the future. So it's really crucial part of uh, designing initially. But after, yeah, because it's reality. You have to maintain it at the end of the days. You can try, I mean, yes, you can set this a grace limit if uh, this is not your key customers. If this is just like a long tail usage, you can be more strong with them. Guys, it's end of a story. You're already working on these deprecated APIs for two years. I think that, that's enough. So you're more straightforward. But if this is going to be your key client and they are happy with the old API, why you have to force them? Any other questions? All right. I've got one suggestion for you to monetize your APIs. I think you should figure out a way to sell this. Because <laughs> this is really cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys are ahead of a lot of companies out there, right? So uh, I think there's a lot of lessons learned that you can share or sell. <laughs> OK, yeah. yeah. So I hope to to participate in the next API days in that case. <laughs> Perfect. All right, thanks, Anton.